Let's go to Dr. David Samadhi right now. Hey, doctor, how are you? I'm great, Steve. How are you? Good, good. Great to talk to you again. I can't believe it's Friday already. Um, and I can't believe I still have my same sinus thing going for another week, but uh, we'll persevere. So, so tell me about this. How big a deal is this that uh, prostate cancer will now be covered by the uh, uh, Zad- uh, Zadroga Act, uh, the 9-11 Act, which provides uh, health care funding for survivors uh, of the 9-11 attacks, as well as the World Trade Center responders, so many of whom have come down with all kinds of illnesses and cancers. So this is actually interesting because when it came to these kind of cancers, uh, in, at least in the field of urology, bladder cancer was one of those cancers that we were seeing a lot as a result of uh, exposure to all the, the, the fumes and, and dust and everything else. But prostate cancer was not really high on the list. And then we have realized that the people who have been involved in 9-11 area, now they have an increase of 17% of getting prostate cancer. And that's part of the reason why now they're covering it. Um, I think they need to be checked. I was just talking to a patient of mine, very young age, at the age of 42, that was diagnosed. And he spent a lot of time over there. Um, so over 50 cancers and these uh, respiratory conditions are being covered. And fortunately, prostate cancer is one of them. So I think this is a good news for people um, who may or may not have coverage and now we're able to take care of them. Yeah, and of course, uh, New York City police detective James uh, Zadroga died in 06 as the result of a a respiratory disease directly attributed to exposure following 9-11. He was the first uh, to have his illness uh, and death deemed the result of uh, his time spent at ground zero. So uh, uh, this is this is good news. And this stock may be good news as well. I mean, yet how many studies have we talked about uh, about coffee, involving coffee, uh, good, bad, indifferent, and now we have uh, a study uh, that says um, uh, further evidence of the health benefits of coffee consumption and its potential role in prostate cancer prevention. That's right. So if you uh, watch the program on Sundays, you know that they're almost calling me Dr. Coffee. Right on Fox News but, Channel, yeah. Yeah, because I've uh, talked about the benefits of coffee. And, and also just to remind people, it's not the caffeine that's important. It's all the elements in the coffee that now we're starting to see that will help. The right, let, me, let, me, let me stop you right there. If, you, if I eat coffee ice cream, I know ice cream is no good for you. But would I get the same benefit or not nearly? Um, you will, and, and and mostly because of the cadmium, the vitamin Bs that's in the coffee itself, and also this is a very interesting. This is so far everything we've spoken about is that if you drink four cups of coffee, it may reduce the risk of prostate cancer. This is in patients that already have prostate cancer, and now we see that three to four cups a day, eight ounce each, um, actually reduces the risk of recurrence. So for the cancer not to be returned. One of the things that I want people to be careful about is don't put a lot of milk and sugar in your coffee because if you're going to have four cups with tons of sugar, that defeats the purpose and that's your obesity and diabetes. But now more and more we're seeing that, you know, some of these antioxidants in coffee really is working well in reducing inflammation, reducing the risk of cancer. So what I would tell people, Steve, is if you have gastric reflux, if you have any kind of esophagitis, inflammation of esophagus, if you are pregnant, um, you know, if you have heart issues, uh, you should stay away from coffee and talk to your doctor. Everybody else, I think this is a great drink. Um, it, it, it's a secret to health. I stand behind it. Most studies long term will tell you that coffee is actually good for you. It's kind of odd for a doctor to really push something like coffee, but it, you, you will see that I've converted a lot of people, including the medical field. All right. Now, now let me just also bring this up again as a layman, but I think you'll agree with this. All these studies, not just this one in particular, but all of these studies, for instance, if this study involves people who have had cancer, um, at prostate cancer, they're more apt to then from that, that point on eat healthier, take better care of themselves. So it's, it's, it's not like you said, it, it, don't put milk in the coffee and sugar in the coffee. It's not like you could, you know, eat anything you want and act any way you want and live any way you want. And, uh, but as long as you drink four cups of coffee a day, chances are you'll, you'll, you, know, you won't get prostate cancer or whatever. It all has to be within the context of a healthy living, correct? 
That's very true, and that's your point is well taken. Absolutely, you can't be like living like a, a very uh, uh, dangerous life and just like do everything and high cholesterol, high fat, and just coffee is not going to like make a miracle. But uh, also the other thing that that's, I found interesting is that if you take one or two cups a day, nothing happens. You won't get much of a benefit. Over six cups is absolutely not healthy for you, and it uh, causes a lot of heart issues. Something between like four, three to four cups a day is when you would get the best benefit of coffee, just something on the side. But of course, you want to have a balanced life. You want to make sure that you exercise and eat healthy. But this is something on the side that can actually help you. All right, let's uh, move on to another form of cancer, and that's lung cancer. Small cell lung cancer, uh, known as L uh, SLC, comprises 15% of all lung cancers and has a very particularly grim prognosis. Uh, now researchers have discovered a class of uh, FDA-approved antidepressants uh, which um, may prove effective in treating patients with this small cell lung cancer. You know, I don't know what to make of this study except the fact that, you know, the long-term follow-up wasn't really there, um, and I'm not sure what to recommend, whether it's some sort of observational study that actually ended up with a positive outcome or not. But the, the truth is that, you know, with this kind of aggressive lung cancer, you know, it doesn't really give you a second chance. And if it's going to be some benefit from these antidepressants, mind you, the side effects are there, and you may get addicted to it. But you know what? This kind of cancer, small cell, actually it kills and has high mortality. So um, it's something that you have to speak to your oncologist and making sure that there's no overlap in some of the side effects of medications. It's an interesting finding. We need a long-term uh, data to really say if it's effective or not. And I'm not sure if we know the mechanism behind it, um, but it's a, it's a research that just came out. It was just published, and it's something for people who are diagnosed with lung cancer, small cell type, to talk to their oncologist, find that this would be beneficial or if there's any interaction with any other medications that they're on. All right, one final one for you. Uh, McDonald's. Um, is now expanding its anti-obesity push. I mean, you know, I, I worked at McDonald's back in the uh, in the uh, 70s, and it was just basically burgers, Big Macs, Quarter Pounders, filet of fish which was fried, uh, apple pie and cherry pie, which was fried, milkshakes. Uh, they've come a, a long way, as many of these uh, fast food places have, and now as part of their value meals, uh, they're going to let customers choose a side salad, fruit, and vegetables instead of French fries. So um, I guess all this is good, right? You know something? We covered this also about a year ago, and I actually had a conversation with Mark Siegel, and I said, do you really believe that McDonald's is going to serve salads or push this healthy stuff? <laughs> He, he, of course, was a believer, and he did a report on it. And I said, let's talk a year from that time and see if they have made the progress. Last week, I said, by the way, what happened to the McDonald's story? Did it come through? He said, David, you were right. You know, it was a nice propaganda. I think the concept behind it is novel. I like the fact that they are pushing for healthy, you know, have apple on the side or fruits and vegetables. But the truth is that, unfortunately, part of the culture of McDonald's and Burger King is that people go there because they love that French fries and they love that, you know, the whole like cheeseburger and everything else. And I, and, and I tell you, I think like once a month, once in a while, if you have gatherings or if you don't have dinner to have one of those fast foods, it's okay. But, you know, I just don't see how people are going to have the whole cheeseburger and to have some apple on the side. Um, moderation is the key. I think it's a lot of fried food and, and the salt <laughs> is a big part of this. I guess what makes the French fries like so tasty. So just be careful, yeah. you know, but I hope it will take off. It would be a good thing for everybody. All right. Dr. David Samadhi, a chairman of urology, chief of robotic surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital. You watch him on Fox News on Sunday, Sunday morning, correct? Sunday mornings at 1030 a.m. on Fox News. You got it. And uh, we'll, speak, we'll speak to you next week, my friend. Thank you. Steve, have a great week. You too, Dr. David Samadhi, ladies and gentlemen.